Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, we've been uh, sort of hammering in, in the teachings over the last many months of the importance of meditating and letting the scriptures renew the spirit of our minds. And we've been focusing on the importance of uh, the story that we tell, the, the correctness of the story uh, should be uh, orthodox, it should be true. But in the early church, when they went out and proclaimed the kingdom, God always, that God always followed up with signs and wonders. We need the power. Now, what I'm going to say tonight is, is I think as we talk about th those things, we always have to cycle back to the most primary thing. And that's agape love. Um, Jesus only pointed out two key things. He said, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, which means the presence of the Holy Spirit and the person of Jesus Christ. <coughs> and this is my new commandment, to love one another as I've loved you. Everything else falls into place when we focus on those things. Um, and sometimes we look at other parts of that and it's important to look at them but even in the midst of Corinthians 12 13 and 14 where he goes into great detail about spiritual gifts is Corinthians 13 which he he defines what love is and uh, you know for many years the key scripture to me was set your hearts on love agape love we're going to talk about that tonight eagerly seek after the spiritual gifts especially that you might prophesy. So of all the spiritual gifts, prophecy is the one that, that's the most important. And, and prophecy is defined a, a sentence or two later as upbuilding, encouraging, and consoling. And that's what the church should be about. That's what we should be about. That's what our interaction with every person should be about. Sometimes we do it pretty well and sometimes we fail. We've been praying for half hour, for half hour. All right, go ahead. Say it open for everything. Thank the Holy you. Spirit would come in to our humblest place, to, to our hearts open, ready to receive your word. I pray that you would be with Frank as he speaks to us. We bless you, Lord, your God. We're, we're filled with, we Amen. want nothing more than to hear Jesus. what you have to say to us. Amen. And we ask now that Amen. nothing will distract Nothing will hinder us from seeking you in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Um, and there's many kinds of love, and in Scripture, there's four kinds of love that are that are mentioned throughout the throughout the Scriptures. Um, there's storge, which means famili familial affection. It's like what exists between the family members. Um, there's filial love, which is friendship. It describes a relationship between people, one of generous warmth for one another. <clears throat> and all these, these are important. The third kind of love is eros, which is passion. It's the kind of affection meant to describe a healthy sexual, sensual union and love between husband and wife. Um, but agape love is charity, and it's probably the most talked about of the four kinds of love. It's the highest, most complete form of affection. God's love for us is the foundation of this love. Jesus gave many lessons about the examples of agape, a strong, selfless, sacrificial love during his earthly ministry. So when uh, it says, set your hearts on love, the, the, the word in Greek there is, is Agape. It's selfless love. It's love without respect, expecting a return. I remember <laughs> when I was out in California in the late 60s and we went out there to become rock and roll stars and uh, a couple of the guys, one guy was the son of a Jewish rabbi, another guy was a Jewish guy who became a Zen monk and then he became a brain surgeon. But anyway, one played bass and one played guitar and uh, the one that played guitar had painted this guitar very beautifully. And uh, the bass player, who was a very addictive personality, said, you know, this other guy, John Sheldon, he says, 
he did it just for the sake of doing it to make other people enjoy it. He says, we do it to get something out of it. Mm -hmm. So John, even back then, was giving us an example of a selfless love. Uh, David and I, not so much. Um, so, in, in realizing that focus, uh, we then start to put things in order, so to speak. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of sayings like the first things first. Well, the first thing that Jesus taught was to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. That's our relationship. And that's, that's, that's where our, our self-will comes into play and gets rubbed a lot of times because the natural reaction from the flesh when somebody does something bad to you, you want to, you know, you want to do something bad to them. But Jesus did nothing wrong, ever. And they did lots of bad things to him. And uh, at the final moment before he gave up the spirit, he just said, to Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. He even justified us, knowing, knowing the things that would transpire into our, in our lives, knowing his original purpose for us. And we've all got an original purpose. And that's like, you know, the artist's first rendering of us. And then through life and our decisions and things we get subjected to which aren't true, and we do a lot of those things. You know, we've all probably got off, off the path some. Some have got off the path more than others. Um, and some people have to really go down into the, to the ditch or the fowler's snare and realize that they're in an absolutely hopeless situation before they start turning and calling to God. It's good that that can be done for sure. For us, if they've gone down to that follow snare, but is it's a better it's a better thing if we could live our life always trying to focus on love, and then the corrections we have to make aren't necessarily severe. Our conversion is more of a gradual type of thing. That's a beautiful thing when it happens that way, and some people are graced to do that. So I just want to go through a, a few uh, scriptures on, on on love, and then. Uh, we're going to just wait on the Holy Spirit for a while tonight, and uh, you know, there's a there's a concept that was big in the uh, uh, the 80s and 90s, in, in a lot of these big ministries that had revival going on, uh, and, and they called it soaking in the Lord. And what they do is they they pray over people. A lot of times they go out in the Spirit and they just stay in God's presence for a long period of time and just sort of soak in His presence. And getting into his presence is something that really is healing for us. Because um, scripture declares, in his presence is the fullness of what? Does anyone remember what that says? It's the fullness of joy. In his presence is the fullness of joy. And uh, he also says, uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So you can, you know, logically, if you get in his presence and you encounter joy, it gives you strength to be able to and it's a, it's a love cycle that goes on and we become stronger and stronger. And when we keep on turning to him in prayer, um, we can then have the discernment about things that might be coming into our lives that are, not, that are detrimental or not good, that are not God, and then we can resist them. You know, if it's evil, the scripture simply says, resist, resist the devil and he will flee. You know, because we have free will. And the devil can't make us do anything. He can trick us. If he tricks us into the temptation and we do it, then his, the power of darkness grows in our lives. But if God gives us the grace of the anointing and discernment and, and, the, and the grace to say no to things that need to be said no to, and we say yes to Jesus more and the power of the Holy Spirit, then our lives can grow exponentially into, into, into grace and into goodness. And we can begin to live more fully what the call in our lives is. And everybody's got a call in their life. And no, no call is insignificant. Every member of the body of Christ is important. You know the whole thing, you know, can the hand say to the foot, I don't need you? No, the, the, the hand needs the foot, you know, the head needs the hand. We need, we need every single part of the body of Christ. And it'll never be um, fully functional. In, in the translation before 71 says about the body of Christ, every Every member fitted together, functioning properly. Okay, so you got to find out where we're fit into the body. And I, and I, I, I uh, 
I, I might have mentioned this, I can't remember, no, I don't think I mentioned last week, but I had a, a, a call with my Jewish friend that I went to college with, and we knew each other way back when, and anyway, he came to Christ and he called me several years ago to testify to me, to, to give the witness to me. And, you know, I mean, we discovered that I had met the Lord, and we've had this great fellowship since. We're about the same age, and we've gone through a lot of the same things, so we can understand each other, and we can help each other in, in our struggles and how we, we overcome. And I shared with him what the Lord was doing with me and the ministry that he's got me working in and how he's equipping me to this and making me pray more. And I said, and he says, Frank, he says, this is the best conversation we've had in several years. He says, because I've got a, a, another ministry call on my life. I said, I understand that. Tell me about it. He said, well, he, he lives down in the south. I think he lives in Arkansas. Little Rock. But anyway, he lives in a, uh, a, a, a community, it's a predominantly black community, and they're two old Jewish white people. And, uh, and this one other lady they've been praying for in their community, in, in their building complex, they saw her outside, and uh, she said to them, you know, I've really been praying about, thinking about getting married, and I was really scared about it, but I look at you two and I see it's possible. So their, their, their perseverance in what they did, and believe me, it, it, there's, I know some things about them, it hasn't been necessarily easy, like it's not easy for anybody. Um, they gave a witness that encouraged somebody. And you know, and he was using language that I would have used, and he says, you know, we, we've, got, we've got different calls, but they're all needed in the body of Christ. So, you know, as we discover what our role is more clearly, and that comes through prayer and comes through you know, the Holy Spirit speaking to us and leading to us, we will actually find our greatest joy and happiness because we're doing what we're supposed to be, we're called to do. You know, a lot of people are doing things that they're not called to do, and they just, there's, there's just not the joy in it because the presence of God is in it. Uh, 1 John 4, 7, Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this love was brought to perfection among us, that we have confidence on the day of judgment, because as he is, so we are in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out all fear. Fear has to do with punishment, so the one who fears is not yet perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. So it gives a little different understanding of fear. You know, what is the fear? Is The fear is of judgment. Because we don't, you know, we look at ourselves and our brokenness and we see that, you know, things are not too pretty sometimes. And we do, don't really understand that God has um, unconditional love for us. And if he, he, he states very clearly, if you confess your sins, I'm faithful to forgive them. It's good news. Okay? He even goes so far as to say that Jesus, who knew no sin for our sake, became sin, that in him we become the very holiness and righteousness of God. And if you can just, when, when, I, when I heard that, and I'm still meditating on it, and I'm still understanding it a little bit better, but when it broke through from my mind down into my spirit, I realized that the, the worst things I have ever done or doing or will ever do, Jesus loved me so much, he suffered everything that we suffered, but he never sinned, he never broke fellowship with the Father. So he knows exactly what we've done, and he loved us so much that he just didn't, forget it, he just didn't put it as far as the east and the west, he just didn't, you know, he became it. So that when we look at our most brokenness, God loves us so much that he has actually become that thing that's broken within us so that we can see that without any condemnation. And that, that's where fear starts to go, because we know there is true forgiveness. It really is. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, I understand it, you know, I had some hard confessions I've had to make. <laughs> and uh, uh, it, it, it's needless worry about it, it's needless anxiety. When the, when the you know, when we, we confess to one another, especially in the church, we have the sacrament of, of reconciliation, uh, that priest is not acting as a, as a man, he's acting as Christ. And he's giving us absolution in the name of Christ. And I don't know how many of you may have ever gone to confession. You come out of it and you feel like a whole lot better. You know, you've just been washed. 
You know, but, you know, when I was young, there used to be lines of people. You know, my parents sent us down to confession frequently. Hate it. But anyway, I get there and there'd be lines and lines of people. And uh, uh, now there's, you know, there's not that many people. Are people not sinning as much? Yes. Are people not as broken as they used to be? I don't think that's the case. I've seen some lines lately. I think they're, they're getting more, they're getting, they're, there's more people, aren't they? Sometimes in the morning there's a goodly number, absolutely. Like, so I, I think people are becoming more aware of it. But still, it's not to the degree um, that maybe even our, our hist in our recent historical past we know about. First Peter uh, 4.8, above all, let your love for one another be intense because love covers a multitude of sins. Isn't that something? Our love for somebody else can cover sin. It can mitigate it. I, I think that's what uh, I think that that's what uh, the Deacon Stephen, who was the first martyr, I think that that's what he did to Saul, who was to become Paul. Because Paul, Saul was standing, and they were laying the cloaks down at his feet while they were stoning Stephen, and he was in total accord with it. And, and, and see, Stephen had a vision of the Lord, and he said to the Lord, don't hold the sin against him. I don't think we would have had Paul if Stephen didn't have that kind of forgiveness and love. So it, it, it gives you, a, you know, the scriptures is a reality. I think some of the things happen just like they say they did. Some of them might have been images for instruction. But the reality of somebody from their heart forgiving. Jesus from his heart on the cross forgiving us. Asking the Father to forgive us. Stephen, martyrs, people in our lives that might have forgiven us. There's a liberty. There's a liberty there. There's a freeing to that. It's a, it's a it's a way that if people were exhibiting that in the face of the world today, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in. We wouldn't have these nuclear bombs and blowing things up and hating people and demeaning people and not taking care of the, the least. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> it would be more like heaven on earth, right? And what does he say? Let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, we want to get to heaven, and that's a good goal. We want to be there. But Jesus says, well, the thing I want you to be more concerned about is how about where you live being a little bit more like heaven? And that's a challenge to me every single day. Because, you know, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And he's, he's restoring us. And he is restoring us. You know, I'm, I'm clinging to something that... Uh, he told me so many years ago when we were in chapel over here, or a few of us, and God spoke, and I mentioned this before, and he said to me in my heart, I'm the only one that heard it was for me, he says, despite your disobedience, I'm making a visitation to you. And I said, oh. And as I've learned more about my disobedience and surrendered it to him, he's told me recently, I'm not just going to make a visitation, I'm making a visitation. He told me, not the things you're hoping for are not just coming, they're here. Now, God is eternal, the resurrection is eternal, it's always here, but it's like the sun hid behind the clouds. The, the sun is always there, but sometimes we can't see the sun. The glory is, heaven and earth are full of his glory, but sometimes we don't see the glory. I was talking with somebody today, just experiencing the God's presence and glory on, on a more frequent basis. And it's a beautiful thing. And, and once, once we start moving into that direction, then our growth in holiness, which means being separated apart for his purpose for us, becomes more functional in our lives. And I'm not saying that we're not doing it to certain degrees, we certainly are. But I think we always have to say there's always a greater degree we can do it. May, uh, Second Thessalonians. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of Christ. So our hearts need to have this direction toward love. You know, we can't just get out MapQuest and find out how to get to love. The <laughs> Spirit has to point us to what love is. Romans, one of my favorites. Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. But God proves his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I mean, we we have to come to that point of really 
taking that personally and realizing that God's love is so immense that while I wasn't thinking about him whatsoever and I was doing many things that were totally opposed to the agape love of God, he still loved me and waited for me and put people in my path and broke through my thick skull until I began to understand that I didn't have to live I was, the way I was living. It was a new way to live. And that was, that was embodying Jesus Christ and asking him to increase within me and I could decrease. decrease. Uh, I can honestly say I can't say exactly like the Apostle Paul says, in the flesh I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. He's taken up more room than he ever took before. Okay? <laughs> and I want him to take it all. But I can't just, I just can't decide to do that. I have to get the understanding of how to surrender to him so that he can come more fully into my life. And we're, I think we're all in the community of doing that. That's why we need to encourage, upbuild, and console. And then without going through the whole thing, <coughs> excuse me, in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, If I speak in human and angelic tongues but don't have love, I'm a resounding gong and a clashing cymbal. Well, does that mean he says you shouldn't speak or you shouldn't speak in human or angelic tongues? No. But he says, if you're going to do that, make sure your focus is on love. Uh, if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have the faith as to move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. Does he want us not to prophesy? Does he not us want to have faith? No, we, he wants that. He told us, set your hearts on love, eagerly seek after the spiritual gifts, especially that you might prophesy. But if you prophesy without love, it's nothing. There's a lot of people that may be doing ministries around the world where you're, gonna see, you're seeing things that are uh, dramatic. People might even be getting, getting healed. But that's, abs that's not necessarily a guarantee that they're living the love of God. I'm not judging whether they are or they're not, but that's not a guarantee of it. This seems to indicate that those things can go on uh, without love. If you don't have love, they gain nothing. So anyway, pursue love and eagerly speak at, seek after the spiritual gifts. Above all that you may prophesy, that's 1 Corinthians 14. For if one speaks in a tongue, he does not speak to human beings, but to God. For no one listens, he utters mysteries in the spirit. So our prayer language in tongues is for us and our building up our self in faith. Okay? And that's a good thing, we need to do that. And Paul said he spoke in tongues more than anyone. And he also says, do not forbid the speaking in tongues. But on the other hand, the one who prophesies does speak to human beings for their building up encouragement and solace. So, you know, when we seek the gifts, we should seek all the gifts that he has for us. But as I was saying to somebody today, in regard to tongues, for example, and I won't spend much time on this, it might be the least of the gifts, but it's a it's a uh, a living lab example of how to surrender to the movement of the Holy Spirit because it's a tangible thing where I'm praying, He's coming in and enabling me to praise in a language I don't know, and I have to trust it's Him, and I don't understand what I'm saying. That's a step in faith, isn't it? Well, do you, don't you think it's a, a, a step in the same type of step of faith? These signs will follow those that believe to lay on their hands on the sick and they'll recover. That's a step in faith, isn't it? Yeah. No, the, the, these signs will follow those that believe that they'll cast out evil spirits. That, that's a step in faith. And there's whole sorts of things that, that are steps. Everything's a step in faith. But again, as I mentioned many times, if we draw near to God, he promises that he would draw near or close to us. So the thing is, is he's gonna give us a little word, a little nudge, a little inspiration, and if we hear that, and again, I give you the caveat, if you hear him wanting, asking you of something or you think he wants you to do something, don't just try and do it under your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and believe not on your own understanding. Step back and say, Lord, I believe this is what you want for me. I, I'm agreeing with that. Would you please give me the grace to accept what you're giving me right now? Then it takes the weight off of our shoulders to figure out how to get it. We just say, Father, if you want me to have this, you gotta give me the grace to be able to have it. Okay? Isn't it? His yoke is easy, his burden is light. He's not kidding. Okay? When we try and do it ourselves, the yoke is awful heavy and the man is burning light. And most people are walking under those burdens. That's why, you know, you may hear me say, my feeling about things is weights come off of me throughout the years at different moments when God is has shown his mercy toward me. 
And uh, I think that, you know, when we get more of that weight off of us, that's an undue weight, it's an unnecessary weight, um, we will be able to do more good on the face of the earth. I give you a new commandment. This is John 3, 34. Love one another as I love you. As I have loved you, so you should love one another. This is how all you will know, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So, when I was reading that the other day, I, I saw it in just a little different light than I ever saw it before. Now, we need to preach and we need to have signs and wonders so that people will, you know, see a demonstration of God's mercy and love. But the greatest tool of evangelization is, is loving like he loves. Because then people will see, like my, my, my Jewish friend down in Florida, he and his wife had gone through a lot of stuff, but they loved one another, they persevered through it, through the hard times. Somebody saw that and said, you've given me hope. Don't people need hope? Isn't it great you can give somebody hope? John 15, 12, this is my commandment, love one another as I love you. Romans 13, 8, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Love does no evil to the neighbor, hence love is the fulfillment of the law. And then we'll again to re repeat something that was said a little bit earlier. I give you a new commandment, love one another as I've loved you, so also you should love one another. This is how all will know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So, what I want to do in, in, our, in our, just our, our prayer in the Holy Spirit right now is, let's ask God to help us with the first thing. Not that we love him, but he first loved us. And, and I know we've been touched by his love. We've all been touched by his love. But there's, there's a, a deeper uh, filling, like John the Baptist would say, I need to decrease and he needs to increase. Frank's self-will needs to decrease and God's love needs to increase, same, saying the same thing. So Heavenly Father, right now I ask a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit to come. I, I, I've spoken the scriptures you gave me, we, we sung the songs, we prayed. Now, Lord, I ask you to reveal your infinite, compassionate, non-judgmental love to us in a deeper way than ever before. And out of that, Lord, you're going to show us how to go about whatever you're calling us to do because we're going to be deeply rooted in love. Heal our bodies.
if there's something tonight that you, 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 you need on your heart that you need from the Lord, and you're seeking Him for that, His grace of provision is yours. So, if you're doing that and you just want to have some confirmation, just wherever, wherever you are in your seat, stand, and I'll come, or people around will just lay hands and confirm and agree with you and whatever's going on in your heart as you're having a dialogue with Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pusha Vasi in the other Bossi Pusha. Some be thought that we ain't got a son of two. Whoa, what's up? I'm not a
for a long time. Lord, lead him into a place where he really is hearing and obeying you like he's never done before. Great mercy and grace, Lord. Let, let whatever the call in his life come out purely. Well, let, let it not be distracted by anything. Oh, let his eyes be fixed on you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Fan a petián. Yes. You guys pray for my healing. I've been working so hard in the house. My joints hurt, oh. my back hurts, my hip hurts, my knees hurt, my ankles hurt. I have, have a hard time sleeping. My, my bones hurt. The work you call the physician's response is that the Lord is our mind, soul, and strength. We ask you that you give her relief in your body right now, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will anybody get anything tonight? Was, does God touch anybody in any way? Or was this we wasting our time? 
That's the way the Spirit works. He confirms it. He's speaking to many th people with a very similar message because yeah. he's not only working in our lives, but he's working in the area. You see, he's good. Let me just turn this off. One, one more thought. And we'll just when, when I was uh, praying a couple of weeks ago with this lady I pray with once a month, I might have mentioned this last month, but it's, it's coming stronger to me. At the end, uh, we fellowship, we pray together, uh, we pray in the Spirit for quite a while, and then we listen to the Lord, and He gives us images or visions and stuff. And she had one, it was of uh, like a volcano uh, erupting, and the lava was coming down. And boy, she's understanding of it is, you know, a lot of it has rocks in it, and it has all this hot stuff, but when it comes out, it forms new ground, it expands. And she felt that was something that applied to the area. And what the Lord showed me was, what I think, what I believe he said to me was this: As you grow in love and in prayer, his indwelling more fully, or his love indwelling more fully in you, and your prayer um, becoming more united with him, will be a force that drives evil from the area. You know, if we're if we're going to have any change, any place, hearts, families churches, communities, um, the spirits of the air that have been, you know, the, the, Satan has a kingdom that has ranks in it. God's kingdom has infinitely greater strength, but at this point they still have the ability to deceive us and to, to uh, accuse us. But uh, there are forces that are trying to keep the word of God from going forth. There are forces that are trying to make our minds get all staticky so we can't hear God clearly. There are forces that are trying to instill certain things. I was with a group many years ago that we prayed every Saturday morning for a long time for interceding for the area and the Lord through that and some other people that were praying, not us but other people in the same, in the for the area as well. There were certain spirits that were at work in the, in the, in the, in the southern tier and those things just won't go because we think they should go. They'll go when the, the power of the Holy Spirit and agape love becomes so strong, they can't, they can't stand to be around it. They gotta leave. Now we, we may have to take authority in certain cases and, and tell them to go, and that's, that's all right, God leaves us to do that. But the, the, we don't have to worry about it because Jesus said, I want you to do two things. Seek first the kingdom and love as I love. And, and if we'll say, Lord, yeah, yeah, I want to prophesy and I want to heal the sick and I want to do all these other things, but let it be done on the foundation and the basis of love. And to that degree, please change my heart. Change, my, change the things within me that are not yet surrendered to you. He's got me a long way from where I've been, but I know there's, a, there's still a long way to go. But that's okay, because I know I'm in process right now, and he has promised that he would complete the good work he began in us. And then, like the thing said about fear, fear's got to do with we're afraid, afraid of judgment because we don't, still don't really let the, the forgiveness and the love of God permeate us to the point where we have a confidence in that and we know it's for real. I know it up here, and it's good to know it up here. I need to know it down here. I need to know it down deep in the wellspring of my being, as my brother Chester Horn would say. And, and the way we get there, and, and Chester, you know, for many, many, many years said this, Ask the Holy Spirit for your spiritual report card. Just keep check in with him regularly and just say, here I am, Holy Spirit, if there's anything you need to, to tell me that I need to uh, change. Uh, yeah, this is going to be St. James, Saturday, September 28th and October 5th and Sunday the 29th. The sixth, they're going to have an exposition of um, Eucharistic miracles, and there are a number of them around the world, and they're 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 remarkable. And, and uh, I heard a doctor up in Syracuse talk about one of the things they found when uh, there was there was one uh, uh, 
can't remember exactly where it was. Lanciano was one of them, but the host actually turned into human flesh, and when they, when they analyzed it scientifically, it was heart flesh, it was a male flesh, it was a certain blood type, and it was a, it was a heart that was under tremendous stress. Okay. Okay. Oh, no. The blood type was universal donor. Yeah. Okay. So there, there's there's lots of things that are happening that he gives us these little things that go oh and wake up a little bit, like uh, Charlie was saying he's talking to the Jehovah Witnesses and they came to his house and he sees talking to him about things of the Catholic faith and they didn't they didn't agree with that he says that's okay he says but what about you know uh, at Fatima when seventy thousand people saw the sun spin you know that was documented by all sorts of papers and people and religious people and stuff like that. And those things happen and he does those things to help us, he does those kinds of signs, but he's also giving us whatever we need sign-wise and understanding where we are. So, like I say, you know, I have, I've not been to Medjugorje, I wish I could go, I, everything I've heard about it is great, but one thing I do know is the same God that is manifesting over there is in my driveway. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. If I could go, I would go. If he told me to go, I would go. If he told me to go, he'd, for, he'd provide the resources for me to go. But in my comings and goings, where I am, he's here. So it doesn't surprise me as I'm driving down the road, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit will just fall on me and I'll just start getting happy. I'm not, I, I, I didn't say, hey, Lord, make me happy. He just says, I'm thinking I'm going to just give a drop of happiness to Frank today. And I'm saying, give me everything you got. And the more that we say we trust you, like Sister, Sister Faustina, your job is to trust me completely. My job is to give you everything that you need. Good deal. Saturday, you guys showed up to do the move. There were seven.